Welcome to Hexham and today we're going to do stage three of the grand tour of Northumberland. Should take us to Slaley Forest today. Behind me is Hexham Old Jail. It was built between 1330 and 1333 and is the oldest purpose-built prison in England. It was in use for almost 500 years. I'm stuck! Someone call the fire brigade. Look at the water. <laughs> Sadly, it's not open on a Sunday, so I can't go inside. It's only open Tuesday to Saturday. This here is the Moot Hall. It was built sometime between the 14th and early 15th century and stands on the site of a much older Moot Hall. It used to house a chapel, a jail, and until 1838, a court of law. In 1761, a crowd gathered in the marketplace to protest new conscription laws for serving in the militia. Magistrates, fearing a riot, called on the North Yorkshire militia to suppress the crowd, resulting in 51 people, including two pregnant women, being shot dead, earning the North Yorkshire militia the name the Hexham Butchers. Behind me is Hexham Abbey. There was originally a monastic church built on this site in 674 AD by St. Wilfred. Between 678 to 821 AD it was classed as a cathedral, but it was destroyed by Vikings in 875 AD. It was refounded as a priory in 1113, but dissolved in 1337. However, the church still remains in use today. Attached to the Abbey is an interactive museum. Uh, this here is called the Saxon Chalice. It was discovered in 1860. It was used for communion over 1,300 years ago. This here is what the Abbey would have looked like between 674 and 875 AD before the Vikings destroyed it. This was what it would have looked like between 876 and 1296 AD. And between 1297 and 1537 when it was finally dissolved. Up until 1888. And 1889 to 1908. More or less up to the modern day actually. Below the Abbey is the Anglo-Saxon Crypt. It's the only part of St. Wilfrid's original church that survives intact today. You can still see the Roman markings on the stones that were taken from the Roman fort in Corbridge that we saw on section 2.
I'm starting to leave Hexham behind now. That's up where the pull is. We have a problem. <laughs> Young Frisian bullocks on a public footpath. We had this problem before, haven't we, Neil? I think we've encountered this once or twice before. Yeah, we had this problem on the Weird Ale Way. These ones are a lot younger than the last ones, though. So the farmer's probably allowed to put them in. I'm still not getting in the field with Frisian bullocks. Go on, I'll film you. <laughs> You're going to film me running across the field. <laughs> I think we'll go in the adjacent field. You shouldn't have them. Staring at us. Yeah, they shouldn't have them on there. It's, um... This is a proper trail path as well, this. That we're on now. It will be when you post this. Yeah, at the moment we are on um, Wainwright's uh, Pennine Journey Trail. Uh, so, <laughs> there definitely shouldn't be Frisian bullocks on a trail, even if they are young. I just stumbled on this. It's cast iron. I don't know what it is. Looks like it could be like an old cannon almost. Don't think it is, but... Looks like it could be a post, maybe. Direction post. Yeah, there's cows with calves and they're definitely not happy with us, even in the adjacent field. And there's a couple of large bullocks amongst the younger ones. So, yep, we definitely did the right thing and go in the adjacent field. <laughs> Especially with Frisians, you just uh, can't trust them. Over there, the Slady Forest over there, on the top there. That's where we're heading into the middle of there. Ah, uh, on the very top? Yeah. I think we'll go up the top and then drop down a little. Right, yes. Yeah, this section of the walk's not really that long. Um, I kept it short because originally my daughter was going to come with us on this section, having missed the last one because it was too long for her. But she's uh, laden with cold today, so she couldn't come. But I took her to Hexham Abbey yesterday, because I was in Hexham yesterday. And so she got to see the points of interest. <laughs> well, the main ones, any case. The path's bringing us out next to this lovely house. Looks like it could have been an old mill, even. Look at this for a house, eh? Beautiful. Okay, that really beautiful house is called Hole House and the trail goes that direction over the bridge but if we follow this path along here we get to a pub so we're going to go to the pub. There's the pub, Dipton Mill. There were originally two mills near this site, neither of which was the pub. <laughs> uh, it's been milling on this area for 400 years. Um, the pub is an old drover's pub. It's not a very long detour, but it's well worth it. <laughs> they brew it themselves. Cheers. That's lush, that. Mm. Really? That's proper lush, that is. Have you tried that? Have you tried it yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> Similar. Mine's mm. nicer. Yours is a bit smoother, isn't it? Yeah. That there was really, really good. I had a pint of the Wop Weasel and no telling of a lie, that was the best pint I've ever had, without a doubt. Uh, the brew it on the premises, definitely recommend that, really do. Now we are going back to Whole House where we uh, 
left the trail in order to do the pub. But while I'm here, uh, Wes dipped in wood in there. There's a cave in there called the Queen's Cave. Legend has it that Queen Margaret of Anjou fled the Battle of Hexham and took refuge in that cave where she was attacked by a robber. However, in reality, uh, Queen Margaret was already back in France at the time of the Battle of Hexham, but it's a nice tale nonetheless. But in order to get to the cave, you've got to be able to cross the bear, and so you have to wait for there to be a bit of a drought in order to get there. That was seriously, seriously good beer, that man. It really was. That was awesome beer. Oh, was it wheat sheep? We no, what weasel? What weasel? Or what weasel? Three pints later. <laughs> 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 I highly recommend that to anyone. Yeah, that and was good luck to you if you try to finish the rest of the walk because you'll probably just end up staying there drinking that. It was brilliant. Yeah, definitely worth a detour for that. Definitely worth a detour. <laughs> There's a squirrel on that tree there. It just fell out of the tree into the water. <laughs> it's the funniest thing I've ever seen. For two years I've been hiking. It's the first time I've seen field mushrooms. So we've just realised it's uh, now three o'clock and we've spent far too much time in the pub. <laughs> and the Abbey. <laughs> oh yeah, the Abbey. Yeah, true. We were talking to that lady in the Abbey for a long time. That lady in the Abbey talks a lot. <laughs> she does, but she was nice. If you want to talk <laughs> about things, that lady in the Abbey, she'll tell you. <laughs> Whatever it is. You don't even have to volunteer the information, she'll tell you. You know about the Abbey is just an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> it was really the pub. Yeah. Uh, that lady in the Abbey though did talk quite a lot. She was very nice. Well, we did go through three pints in the pub and a meal. So, I think we are probably in the pub for a good two hours at least. Two pints. <laughs> <laughs> I recommend the soup, the um, mushroom soup. Yeah, that was good. I Wait, you had it, yeah, so I don't know. It looked good. Fellow YouTube viewers, did you know oh. that the Northern Wayfarer eats raw mushrooms? Picked from a field by his own hand. There's nothing wrong with raw mushrooms. Yeah, you might not see them on the next. Uh, <laughs> so you know what you're doing. 450 miles. <laughs> as long as you know what you're doing, there's on nothing wrong. Check me out. <laughs> is that right? Comment below. I don't think it is. Don't comment. Just tell me it's not right. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Am I going to stick this in the edit or what? That's like I'm going to have to make it. <laughs> I'm going to have to make a video of outtakes for this. Like, oh look at that down there. It's lush. Pretty good. It almost looks like there's a cave That's down the bottom there, doesn't it? That's awesome. Isn't it? I was there a cave behind it in, in those cracks. That's really nice down there. I doubt my camera was going to pick this up, but it's really good. This here is Newbiggin. Um, the Battle of Hexham, which was one of the battles in the War of the Roses, occurred somewhere in this vicinity in 1464. It resulted in the Lancastrian commander, the Duke of Somerset, being executed in Hexham Marketplace. If you remember from the last walk, um, there was Duke's house. That's where they found Duke of Somerset hiding. Although it wasn't that particular house, but the house was built on that site. When you see the lay of the land, you can understand this is kind of the place where you could have had a battle. They don't know precisely where the actual battle was, but it, they know that it was in this vicinity somewhere. A little bit of a road walk at the moment. I just stumbled on all these apples just dumped. Fly tipping apples. <laughs> at least it will fertilise.
Okay, we're at Audley now and we are following this footpath, just in case you miss it. Yeah, when you leave Audley, you're following this track. It's easy to miss this path down here. That's just the path you need to take. There's a Pennine Journey badge. Behind me is Dukesfield Smelt Works. I've been here before when I walked the lead road. The orchards are more or less all that's left of the, the former smelt works. And it once carried the flue, the chimney flue. On top of the orchards is a crude filter system. The smoke from when they were melting the lead would have been passed through here and they would have had bits of straw and uh, hay and sticks and the particles from the smoke would have clinged to the straw and that way they would have got as much lead as they possibly could from the smelting process. The site dates from the late 17th century and was in use until 1835. This trench here was where there was once a water wheel that would have worked the bellows for the smelt works. This here is what the site would have looked like. And this is what the site looks like today. Nature has claimed it back. It's one of the highlights on the lead road if you decide to walk it or cycle it, which travels from Bladen to Killip. I'll put a link when I did it. You don't actually cross this bridge, but here in the bottom of the river you can see the remains of the old dam that used to be here that would have fed water to the water mills at the smelt works. Just a little way off the path is the remains of another smelt mill. This smelt mill was used for making red lead, which was used for producing glass. Not much of it remains now, except a few little walls. You could probably get away with a hammock camp around here. Lots of uh, decent enough trees. So we've just left the first set of woods. We're about to go back into the woods now, but we've walked up away from the burn and we've just been given this beautiful view. Absolutely stunning. Look at this, fly tipping, slaley forest, disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Whoever has tipped this has left evidence of who they are. Mrs. K. Slevin, 19 Finchail Terrace, Jarrow, Tynan Weir, NE32, 3TX. Ironically, the envelope says recycle. That's disgusting behaviour. Let's put a dampener at the end of a really good walk. But when I get back, I'll be reporting it and uh, hopefully something will happen. In fairness, it was probably Mr. Selvin who ditched all the stuff. <laughs> Chances are Mr. Selvin's left him. I'm not surprised if he ditches stuff like that. 
hence all the clothes and the toys. So this is the end of section three. And I'll talk more about Lady Cross Quarry when we do section four. So Neil, how have you found? Uh, it's quite tiring today to be honest. It was a short walk, but uh, tiring. I think it might have something to do with the fitness level. So hopefully by the end of this walk, we'll be mega fit and then uh, this will seem easy. Not fit to do for the beer. <laughs> Maybe a little bit to do with the beer, but not too much. <laughs> Yeah, I actually quite enjoyed this walk. It, it wasn't packed as much as the last couple of walks in terms of points of interest. Once you get past Hexham Abbey, there's only Dukesfield Smeltworks really. There's some lovely scenery, uh, lovely walks along little rivers and streams and little ravines and what have you. But, uh, it's been an enjoyable walk. And the next walk will take us to Allen Heads via Blanchland. So we'll be up over the, on the moors. Uh, a lot of lead mining stuff happening so uh, look forward for that one so if you enjoyed my video give me a thumbs up don't forget to comment below and subscribe for the next adventure and don't forget to share on social media and tell your friends about me and uh, i'll catch you on the next one